Testing one, two, three, computer security threats and risks. With the explosive growth of network access comes the explosive growth of security risks and dangerous threats. These threats come in the form of viruses, worms, Trojan horse, or logic bombs. Coordinated attacks stem from these things. Botnets, distributed denial of service attacks. Internal threats can be in the form of insecure passwords, removable media, network attached devices. System administrators must be aware of these type of system attacks, how they gain entry, and what kind of damage they can inflict, and also what needs to be done after um, one of these things successfully attack. System administrators should focus mostly on proactive protection. Educate users, give them the knowledge to protect themselves. This is the best approach. Now system security is more than just securing sensitive data from unauthorized access. You also have to uh, maintain its integrity and keep its existence secret. What I mean by integrity is data cannot be changed or corrupted in any form in transit. Many companies use security guards and cameras to secure an environment. Virus attacks destroy information. Now, virus attacks can destroy a mail server or a network file server. Um, this could be catastrophic. A worm attached to an email message can bring a mail server to a halt. If there are no backups, then data could be lost forever. Viruses are the most common and prevalent type of attacks. They replicate without the user knowing what is going on. They spread very quickly. The cost to repair a virus attack can be very expensive. It takes much time. It can take days, weeks, or even months. And if you are a time sensitive company, then your damage, your business could be ruined. Types of viruses are boot sector viruses, companion viruses, file infector viruses, macro, memory resident viruses, polymorphic viruses, metamorphic viruses, and stealth viruses. We will talk more about each one of these later. File types that are commonly infected are .bat, .com, .doc, .dll, .exe, .html, .mdb, .scr, .vbs, .xls, and .zip. Also very common are Trojan horses, logic bombs, and worms. Now, a Trojan horse can be attached to a downloaded program and you think you're installing a screensaver for example which you are in many cases but you're also installing malicious code that later gives hackers a backdoor access to your system and lets them remotely control your system now a logic bomb is malicious code that is inserted by a computer programmer who actually works for the company that made this software and this bomb this logic bomb is set to detonate on a person's birthday or at some specific date or even after the software is open a certain amount of times. Now one way to prevent logic bombs is by having the, so the piece of software looked at thoroughly by a third party company. And 
worms, as we mentioned earlier, the type of virus. It's actually slightly different than a virus, but it basically replicates itself very quickly. And so much so that it can bring a, a robust server down to its knees. Another uh, threat is adware. Adware uh, and gets into your PC and you are uh, inundated with different advertising and ads. Spyware, software that gets on your PC and records everything that you do, websites that you've been to, and basically spies on you. Rootkits. There are rootkits called firmware rootkits, kernel rootkits, persistent rootkits, application rootkits, and library rootkits. I'm just going to talk about one of these, and that's kernel rootkit. Basically digs deep into your computer you can't get rid of it. The only way to rid yourself of a rootkit is to completely install the operating system. Rootkits can open back doors, so hackers can remote control your system. A botnet is basically a network of many, many computers running a piece of software that at one designated time or day will attack a server or another computer and cause what's called a denial of service attack, a distributed denial of service attack. And botnets basically don't gain entry to a server, but they will bring it to its knees because of so many illegitimate requests. Privilege escalation. Privilege escalation. is another threat that happens when a virus attempts to use vulnerabilities in software to try and up its privilege status. All software and operating systems have vulnerabilities and therefore can be ex ex exploited non-technically Social engineering can be a big threat because people by nature are very trusting and when somebody calls asking for help, maybe they paint a scenario where they'll be fired if you don't help them. And if you're not careful, you can give up crucial pieces of information to a complete stranger. Social engineering can be prevented by properly training people in an organization. and. Uh, educating people to what else social engineering is. Well, phishing. Phishing is a technique where you are sent a piece of email and you in that email is a link. You click the link and it takes you to a portal that looks very familiar to you but if you notice closely the URL is phony. And this type of phishing scams get you to give up your username and password to a website, a banking website or prominent portal. Password security is very important. Type of attacks against passwords are brute force attacks, dictionary and hybrid attacks. A brute force attack basically tries to guess your password. It's a piece of software. It's a program that runs against the password hash and just tries every type of combination. Now, a dictionary attack uses words in the dictionary to try and guess your password. It is important when you put together a password not to use just regular words from a dictionary. You should use a combination of numbers, characters, and uh, letters of course, lowercase and uppercase. A hybrid password attack would be a pa uh, an attack that uses a combination of brute force and dictionary attacks. Security to servers includes physical access. Uh, internet servers are especially vulnerable. Why? Because they have services and ports open that can be seen from the outside. Always be aware, system administrators, of what services are running on your server and what ports are open.